thanks a lot. Uh, at the beginning, I'd like to, uh, to really thank uh, ISI for providing me this opportunity to discuss with the audience and uh, all whoever is watching uh, this events, the issue of arbitrary revocation of nationality in Bahrain. At the beginning, I important for me to indicate that um, it is uh, really similar effects of stateliness, but in my evaluation, revocation of nationality could be more harmful than even if you are born with stateliness. Why? Because you already, at the beginning from your birth, you practice your basic right as a citizen and you grow up with it but so sudden is being taken away. And it is more harmful if that's been taken away without free or without a prayer notice or without giving uh, uh, legitimate reasons. Um, and, and, and here would make you to be so much in pain. <clears throat> For sure, it's gonna be more painful if you're gonna be away from your country or you are being forcibly deported from your country after they take away your nationality and you become stateless. And today, uh, through this presentation, I try to elaborate a little bit on the different uh, aspect of this case and uh, to give um, a very close and an insight view of how this condition is going on in Bahrain and how it is really a battle and a very uh, uh, a grave type of the human rights evaluation. So we can start uh, here. Next slide, please. Yeah, yeah. as um, uh, we indicated that, this is gonna be part of the series of the lectures uh, focusing on the issue of the citizenship stripping uh, through a sequence of uh, lectures organized by ISI. So thankful to them. Next, please. So international legal framework, uh, as we know, there are uh, two basic one, which all the time we refer to in the international conventions when we discuss about the uh, issues of the stateliness, uh, the 1954 convention relating to the status of the stateless persons and second one, 1961 on the reduction of the stateliness. So they are, I can say they are, they are basis of the legal frame internationally which uh, tackling the issue of the stateliness uh, and, and it's been uh, so clearly referred to whenever we want to indicate to the countries who are abusing their citizens or they are uh, keeping a, a stateless, uh, uh, a citizen as a stateless, we are referring them to these uh, two conventions. Next, please. Now, uh, to give a clear indication of how this citizenship revocations happened in Bahrain. So our a case study gonna be today in this presentation about uh, this revocation of nationality in Bahrain. Next. Uh, if we start with the nationality rights in Bahrain in constitution, um, there are a clear indication that it is a basic right. A person inherently enjoying his Bahraini nationality cannot be stripped of his nationality except in case of treason and such other cases as prescribed by law. This is, is being uh, written in, 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 in the constitution of Bahrain either 1973 or the current constitution 2002. But uh, in practice, we can see that this basic article is not being considered through the act and the way it's being implemented. So they are override uh, this uh, basic right, which is already clear in the Bahraini constitution. Next slide. Um, unfortunately, uh, after the 2011 and starting revocation of nationality of uh, Bahrainis, which started uh, by a revocation of 31 citizens, and I was one of them in November, exactly in 7th November 2012, and that was through a Ministry of Interior order. Uh, Bahrain faced with a lot of uh, condemnation internationally during that time, and everyone was uh, questioning this uh, Ministry of Interior order and what is the basis of it and why it's been happened without any type of the uh, protection of the law or any implementation of the law, 
which made the authorities in Bahrain to be embarrassed. That couldn't be answered because even through the uh, uh, local legislations, it should be through a decree by the king or a certain types of the citizenship law or any other laws can give authorities such uh, power to revoke the nationality, even though I believe that it is never ever should be occurred, never ever uh, a revocation of nationality should be part of any political tools or any type of the penal code. But uh, in that case, um, it, it made the authorities to make some amendments toward the citizenship law, which occurred in 2014. So this Article 10, uh, some amendment is being uh, uh, made to give further uh, rights to the uh, authorities to revoke uh, nationality and uh, quote unquote to justify uh, the reasons what, why they are being allowed to revoke uh, the uh, nationality. So here we can see that uh, uh, some amendments is, is been part of that road, which is, you can see it here. Next one, please. And 2013 amendments to the anti-terrorism law, that law has been passed on 2005 and such amendment has been made to it that to uh, whoever is uh, uh, perpetrators of the dangerous terror crimes can have their citizenship revoked. Uh, keeping in mind that uh, uh, we cannot find in Bahrain an independent judiciary system that we can believe that they will consider the cases as fake or the cases is genuine. In the meanwhile, we could see so many cases that uh, in root and in nature, there are political cases, but just to give justification to the authority uh, uh, to uh, use a high ceiling of the penal code towards our revocation of nationality and even to the executions and so on, they've been accused that they been acted as a tourist or, 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 or there were been a, a, a terror act. So uh, deliberately, this anti-terrorism law is being uh, modified or amended that to give further power to the judiciary, whoever is being uh, charged quote unquote, a, a, a terrorist act, even if they uh, uh, been involved in burning a tire, for example, in the street, or even they had some type of the assembly somewhere, or even they had some type of the freedom of speech somewhere because they criticized the government easily, they could be charged with this law, uh, and then the sequence of it, revocation of nationality, and that where we could see that the number of those who lost their nationality and their nationals have been revoked since 2012 till 2019, it was dramatically increasing where we can see it later on. Next, please. Uh, here, I like to display a very, very short uh, uh, video from those who are nationalities have been revoked to see how they say and how they received this decision by Minister of Interior and some uh, comments on that one. Can you display Bahraini it? Bahraini regime has found a new tool, a new way of diluting opposition. It revokes citizenships. It makes Bahraini stateless. Without a passport, a person loses every right a human being is entitled to. They cannot work. They cannot freely access education or medical care or legal support. Nor can they have a bank account, which means they can't buy or sell property and many other things. But they also can't leave Bahrain. I was sleeping midnight. They announced it in the TV, Bahrain TV. Mm, it was around 2 p.m. I was just having lunch with my family. My kids, they now woke me up and said, Dad, we have now bad news for you. They announced it, uh, they drop you Bahrain citizens. I said, okay, fine. That's all, he said, that's all. I said, okay, bye, and sleep. And I received uh, a message through social media, says there is a list published from the list of 72 Bahrainis whose citizenship is revoked. And my name was the third name. I was out in Turkey and Thailand. I came back from there. I was on vacation. After 30 or 40 days, they put my name on the list. 
for no case. I found my name with a group that they took their passports. When I ask, they say we don't know, but uh, you are one of them. One morning in 2012, with no prior warning, the Bahraini government published a list of 31 people whose citizenship was revoked. This has happened twice more since. Once for 72 people and once for 56 people. Now a total of 159 Bahrainis are stateless. These decisions were made without due process. Legally speaking, not one of these people is Bahraini anymore. Most of them belong to the Shia majority. You lose your citizenship, means you are dead. You, you cannot, you can do nothing, completely. Anybody who's deprived of their citizenship has, been t has had taken away the most fundamental right of all. Uh, he's a non-person. Bear in mind, if somebody loses his, his citizenship, he can't study here, he can't wear, his family can't get health care. It means that he should either leave Bahrain or live here with a very difficult situation where it, it's difficult to get a job or education or even treated in, in a public hospital. Yeah, uh, I think uh, the, the video will summarize the uh, what and how the decision is being taken. It is not uh, like uh, through uh, a court, and, and I was part of it, and even without any justification is being given. And the sequence out of it, I think they summarize it so clearly what we are elaborating on it in this uh, event today. Next one, please. So, so clearly they indicated and hear that the, the consequences of his stateliness or being uh, 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 your national has been revoked uh, here that we can indicate some cases which, uh, which which clearly mentioned that it is totally as a social death. It is like you are not existing anymore. And as I said, beginning of my speech today that uh, here the most harmful part of it because you already have at least some your basic rights, by sudden you are losing it without any justification. Next, please. So here yeah, the effects of the revocation of decision, uh, giving some example of it, uh, this type of the uh, newborn child from a nationality, so they will no longer be a citizen. All those new newborn childs from those who nationals has been revoked, they became stateless right away and we have so many cases in Bahrain and especially those who are uh, abroad they they face this this problem so 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 badly that a new generation now started to become stateless due to revocation of nationality of their parents or their father the barrier of the rights to work for sure because you don't have any legal residency in the country so you don't have right to work and you uh, work will not be permitted at all due to lack of any documentation, legal documentation from your side, barrier of use of many services previously been available, and even your bank account, you don't have an access to it, you cannot open a new bank account, even your pension, you cannot uh, deal with it, you will, your pension will be stopped, and even your money cannot be uh, withdrawn. Your own uh, uh, property, even if you have a property, you can deal with it, you cannot deal, you cannot sell it, you cannot buy a new property, barrier of traveling, it was so clear, if you're going to be in the country, you will not be allowed to uh, travel, but later on, they will uh, 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 um, deport you forcibly uh, uh, with the accusation that you're no, no longer a citizen and you don't have legal residency in the country. Next. And the total damage of the citizenship vocation, I can say here, it could be indicated in, in, in so many ways of a depression of the rights to identity. No further documents you can have, all will be taken away. The loss of sense of security and sense of perennial threat, for sure, easily you could be threatened, which is all of us uh, be, be through that. The barrier of the rights of the benefits for housing, inflation, and application for any new housing. If you have uh, any application for housing that will be banned, will be canceled. If you have, you cannot have access to the healthcare, neither to any educational institution, and so on. 
or, 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 or even uh, for any type of the basic services that you previously used to get it as a citizen, all will be stopped. Next, please. So the sequence comprehensive violation of the human rights. It begins with arbitrary arrest. If they didn't inform you in advance, so even if they informed you through any social media or uh, uh, you, you know it through uh, uh, an official uh, uh, news agency and so on, so you can expect that you're going to be under arrest at any moment. Under that arrest, torture will be applied and then unfair trial so easily and forcible deportation. And this is not claims, they are a clear indications of the cases that I am giving you today uh, for the particular cases that we study it so closely. So we have it uh, now uh, we, and we are following it up. All happens uh, uh, in, in this sequence. Next, please. So let us go through the statistics that uh, we are talking about. Uh, it started in 2002. You can see from your left hand side uh, in 2002, 31 citizens, their nationality is being revoked, which I was part of it. And that was through the decision of the Ministry of Interior. Just one year, 2013, uh, no revocation had been there because the authorities trying to make some uh, uh, legislations, amendments to how to give it legal frame uh, work towards and, and, and giving them a justification that why they want to revoke the nationality. So it been through three different ways, either through a, a ministerial orders, which happened with the, uh, the first group uh, by Minister of Interior, or through the uh, a royal decree, which among all of it, uh, we have 108 cases, their nationality has been revoked by royal decree. And the majority of it, which is the total uh, 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 10, 2019 was almost 990 uh, Bahrainis there lost their nationship uh, due to this process. So the majority was through the court. And that indicate that the court is not uh, uh, an, an independent uh, judi judiciary. And the meanwhile, the more amendment to the local legislation led to the increasing number of the citizens who are their nationality is being revoked. So here, if you can see this by chart, it started from 2013, 21, 2015, 2008, uh, 2016, 19, uh, 2017, 156, 2018, uh, uh, around 300, 298, 2019, 181. Then when we reached in April, 2000, uh, uh, um, 19, there was a decree by the king after huge international pressure and so much embarrassment to Bahraini authorities that this uh, sequence is this very uh, uh, dramatic way where now we can see a lot of Bahrainis uh, revoke, uh, the nationality will be revoked uh, uh, just because they are opponent to the authorities and there is no enough justification that why the authority should uh, make amendment to their uh, local legislations and give further uh, power either to the uh, government uh, cabinets or to the uh, individual ministers like Minister of Interior or through royal decree uh, where the number was huge uh, increasing uh, 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 in, 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 in sequence. That led that the king uh, issue a decree in April 2019, reinstating 50, 551 of uh, the total of those who are nationalities being revoked. So yet still we have 434 citizens, still their nationality are revoked, which is still I am one of them. And that in that decree, the power is being shifted from the judiciary uh, uh, system to the executive body. Uh, more power is being given to the government and uh, through any type of the recommendation of Ministry of Interior, then the government have the power to revoke uh, the nationality. So at the end, even uh, the in the state of 551, we can 
see it, and it was good indication, but unfortunately, the, the, the core problem is not being solved. Why? Because still the government at any moment uh, through any type of the recommendation of the Minister of Interior, still they can continue to revoke uh, nationality in addition to the any type of the real decree. At the same time, we couldn't see any amendment towards the, the, the nationality law or anti-terrorism law that they can uh, um, uh, stop uh, revocation of nationality uh, toward the certain clauses in these laws. So there was no amendment to this law to stop it. And at the same time, we can see yet 434 citizens still their nationality are revoked. Next slide, please. So is it really the claim they, 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 they made that uh, they are targeting the, 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 the terrorist? Uh, now we can see the statistics that we monitored. We can find among all those where the nationality is being revoked, former member of the parliament, four, <coughs> which is, I am uh, out of this four, religious scholars, 17. We have PhD holders, four. <coughs> the rest, the majority are either political or social activists, 970. We have human rights activists, four. We have media activists too. We have businessmen too. We have one lawyer and we have three uh, uh, women. <clears throat> Although, yes, uh, so sorry. Although uh, <clears throat> the, the, some of them, including um, uh, uh, some women, part of 551, but still there is one woman among them her nationality has not been uh, restored uh, or, or reinstated. Next, please. <coughs> yeah, good to indicate this case, this case of Ibrahim uh, uh, Karimi, Bahraini citizens, if we start from the beginning in 14-4-2011, <coughs> he'd been detained and tortured. He was uh, my cellmate, uh, part of my detention from April, uh, uh, from May uh, 2011 till August. So, and in 12 March 2012, he'd been acquitted without charges. Imagine he'd been acquitted after almost a year, then his nationality has been revoked. He was part of our group, first group. His nationality has been revoked without an indication. Imagine someone even, he was being jailed and he had been acquitted, but he's suddenly uh, through the Minister of Interior, his nationality has been revoked. He made an appeal. Why? Because after we start to contact many international uh, uh, communities about this case, they said better that you can zoom the, the local process. So he gone <clears throat> and appealed the case in 2014, in 29 April 2014, his appeal has been denied. And if we can see the denial appeal, uh, it says that it is totally right of the state to revoke the nationality of any citizens <clears throat> without to be obliged to indicate or clarify any type of the reasons. Why? Because the government, most people, they are aware about the security of the states and they shouldn't justify it. In 28 October 2004, <clears throat> court ordered his deportation out of the country then in, uh, uh, in, in September 2015, he'd been arrested for tweeting. And in the 31st March 2016, since he is sentenced for uh, two years and the fine of 2,000 Bahraini dinar, which around <clears throat> uh, more than $5,000. Uh, then finally, in 30th of October 2017, he'd been deported forcibly out of the country to Iraq and now he's living in exile. Next one, next example. Here we have the tragedy and very heartbreaking story of Muhammad uh, Fathi. He was part of the list, the first list, 31. He passed away in exile. He passed away in Iran in exile after he'd been deported from Bahrain in, in last month, 7th, March 2021, he passed away, away from his family. His oldest children, Yusuf, he was in the prison, he'd been detained. After eight years in prison, just day before yesterday, he'd been released. You can see his, 
this photo, <coughs> how he is hanging his mother after he been released. So while his <coughs> father being um, uh, um, uh, deported and he couldn't see his father and no communication and he been free day before yesterday, but he even he couldn't see his father even after his death. Next, please. <clears throat> so we uh, in Salam DHR, we try to document uh, all the case. So we uh, designed a website called Ana Bahraini, I am Bahraini, indicating the details and statistics wise and, and any uh, articles, any reports or any video will be issued in the case we want to document it. Uh, so this is uh, the, the site that we designed as much as we can, we want to make it a reference site for any researcher or any authorities want to follow up the case. And here the case is details is there. This site is in Arabic and in English. So uh, um, uh, any part of it that you can utilize it through that link. So it is in both uh, language. We can go back, please. We can go back to the, yes, next. Okay, as recommendation, I try to make it very, very short. It is so clear that the Bahraini authorities are really uh, accused of uh, uh, acting against of the international uh, law, international conventions, which is part of it. They already signed on them, agreed on it. So Bahraini government should rescind uh, the revocation of nationality and compensate the victims. Part of the compensation is not just giving back their nationality, which is a must, but then all these types of the uh, losses they got should be compensated. All local legislation to be amended in compatibility with the international convention, banning revocation of nationality. And here I indicated that nationality law and anti-terrorist uh, law demand of the Bahraini authorities to allow the visit of the related UN special rapporteurs to meet with the victims of the Serbian nationality. Indicating here, we can say that since 2006, uh, Bahrain didn't allow uh, any special rapporteurs to visit the country yet. A call for international committee and NGOs to apply all international mechanism to oblige the Bahraini authorities to comply with the signed and uh, ratified international treaties and declarations which confer to all uh, on all Bahrainis the rights to nationality. Last one and thank you. Thanks a lot.